happy Saturday or happy Sunday or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whatever day you're watching this, and welcome to Kids Church Online. Today we're going to be learning about God is compassion, Jesus is compassionate, and we need to be compassionate as well. Join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God. Always there for us. He's good in every way. Pouring out his awesome love. He's good in every way. He fills us up with peace and joy. He's good in every way. He gives us all we need and more. He's good in every way. Come on now, join Come on yeah. now, join with me. Everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give him everything. He's good in every way. He's good in every way. He's good in every way. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God. Saving me, rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. You set my feet on solid ground. You set my feet on solid ground. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Everything I have, I owe it all to you. For everything you are and all you do.
honest with you, I wasn't so great at that game. Maybe I'm not so good at my animal sounds. Something I need to work on. I hope you had fun with it, and I hope your family's had fun with it. And I hope that you really enjoy the lesson that's coming up. So when my boys were younger, they still loved to go out and do adventurous things, and I was always pretty hip to send them a snack or something along the way. And in today's lesson, we're going to hear about a boy whose mom probably did the same thing. She sent him off one day when he got to hear and see Jesus. And on that day, she sent him some bread and some fish. And she may have made a bread something like this one that we're going to make today. All you need to have is a, a bowl. We're going to take a cup of flour and add it into that bowl. Then we're going to take one teaspoon of baking powder. Now this is a half a teaspoon right here, so I'm going to use two of those. So we're going to use a half a teaspoon and then another half a teaspoon to make one full teaspoon. So we're going to put one teaspoon of baking powder, two tablespoons of olive oil. This is a giant two tablespoon spoon, so I only need one of these. Two tablespoons of olive oil, a half a teaspoon of salt, we'll just kind of put that in there like that, and then a third cup of warm water. So let me get my third cup right here, a third cup warm water. We'll add that in there, and then we're going to mix it up. You know, when I think about mixing things up, I think that's what Jesus did. He was always mixing things up. He was taking things the way that people knew them and changing them around, giving us new things to think about and new things to consider. Now, as I mix this bread up, the other thing that we have to do is to get our pan ready. So let me heat this pan up over here. You guys can probably just use the stove with your parents, but since I'm here at the church, I just have this little electric skillet that I'm going to use. And so we mix this up really well. Can you see that in there? It's just going to look like that. And then you're going to take it with your hands. For some of you, that'll be your favorite part. I love to do that. And probably mix this into four pieces. So you make a ball. Then you're going to take that ball and break it in half, and then break that in half, break that. So you have four pieces, then you're going to pat it out, whoops, then you're going to pat it out. Hopefully you won't drop it like I just did. You're going to pat it out like a little pancake, and all you have to do is to drop it into the pan. Make another one, we're going to drop that one into the pan. And the same thing again. And this is really similar to the bread that people would have made back in the times that Jesus lived. It also might be similar to the bread that they made at Passover. There's no yeast in it, so it's not going to rise and get big and fluffy. I tell you what, it still is pretty good to eat. And it just takes those couple of ingredients. We put it in the pan, we give it a couple minutes, and then we'll flip it. So as you cook your bread, after it's gotten um, golden brown on one side, you just flip it over and you do the same thing on the other side. You're just going to cook the other side. Oops, let me get that one flipped and let's get this one flipped as well. You give that a few minutes on this side and then we'll see what happens. And just like that, before you know it, your flatbreads are all done. You can just set them in a basket or put them on a plate. They're warm and toasty. It's probably what a little boy's mom would have done. She would have set them aside and then when it got time for her son to go on his little journey for the day, she would put them in a basket or she would wrap them up in some kind of bag and take it with him and send it with him so that he would have a snack when he was out. Something like that is probably what happened in our lesson today. And then when the little boy was hungry, he would just take one of the breads out of his basket it would be so delicious. And such a good way to know that his mom loved him and was caring for him. We're about to learn about the compassion of Jesus and how much Jesus loved and cared for us through the story of the feeding of 5,000 people. Grab your Bibles and we'll get started. 
All right, I've got everything cleaned up and we're ready to jump into God's Word. So will you join me? Let's pray and let's see what God has to say to us today. Father God, we thank you that you are a mighty God and a holy God and that we can trust you no matter what. Today we thank you especially for being a God who cares, a God of compassion. Teach us to have the same kind of heart and compassion for others that you do. May your Holy Spirit move in our lives and teach us the things you would have us to know. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. All God's children said, Amen. All right, so today we're in Matthew chapter 14. And when we are in this part of the scripture, what I want you to know is where it fits on the timeline of the big God story. And it happens right after John the Baptist was killed. Now you might remember that John was Jesus' cousin. And he's the one who was baptizing people to help point the way to Jesus. And the Bible says very clearly that Jesus was sad about this. He said he heard what happened to John and he wanted to be alone. So he went into a boat to a quiet place. Now the thing about this was that he was Jesus and no matter where he went, people wanted to go too because he was Jesus and they heard his teaching and they saw the miracles that he was doing and they followed him everywhere. And because of who he was, it was very hard for him to have time alone. The Bible says that the crowds followed Jesus by walking and when he came to the shore, he got out and he saw the crowd and it says in this version, he had deep concern for them. And the word that we have for deep concern is compassion. It means seeing somebody's need, seeing their hurts, but doing something about it. I mean, it's one thing to say, oh, that's so bad, that's so sad, that's so hard. But it's another to see that thing and do it. And we know that Jesus is compassionate. We know that Jesus was filled with compassion for these people and that God is a God of compassion. And as his children, we need to be filled with compassion for others too. Now it says he healed the people, um, he taught the people. When it was almost evening, the disciples came to him and said, there's nothing for these people to eat. They'd been there all day long. There were no bathrooms, there were no drinking fountains, there were no restaurants or snack bars. And they were so hungry by then. The disciples thought that Jesus should send them away and they could go back home or go to the villages and get something to eat. But Jesus flipped their world upside down again. He mixed it up and he said to the disciples, well, you guys get them something to eat. Us? How are we supposed to get them something to eat? There was a boy in the crowd and the boy had some fish and some loaves of bread, like the loaves of bread that I just made, just little simple pieces of bread. They said, this is all we have. Jesus was like, that's really not a problem. Bring them here to me. And it said, Jesus directed the people to sit down on the grass. And when they did that, he took that bread and he took those fish, that little offering that was given to him, and he blessed it and he gave it to God and thanked God for it. And pretty soon as they began to take things out of the basket to hand out, they just kept coming. And there was more and more and more. And on that day, every person there was fed. The Bible says that there were 5,000 men there plus the women and children. So from those loaves of bread and fishes, over 5,000 people were fed. And get this, I love this, it's so cool. When they were all finished, there were 12 baskets left over. Now how many disciples were there? 12. There were 12 of them who followed Jesus. There was enough left over for each one of them. But you know what's another really cool thing? Why wasn't there 13? I mean, what about Jesus? Jesus wasn't worried about himself. He knew that God the Father would provide for him. But he was always caring for others. He cared for others more than himself because he is a God of compassion. That's what I want you to remember today is that God is a God of compassion. Right now, I'm finding it a little bit hard sometimes to be compassionate because I can't be out around, among people. There's so many things that I want to do, but I feel like they're just things that I cannot do. But what I'm learning again through this lesson is that I just have to offer my loaves and fishes. I just have to offer what I have. And I need to care and find ways to show people that I care. That's what you can do too. Ask God to show you ways that you can show that he cares, that you can show that you care. What are some ways that you can do that? I'm finding for me some of those are to make videos of saying, hi, how are you doing? Check in with people. Maybe it's sending someone a letter. Maybe it's sending someone some money to help them in their time of need. Maybe it's um, letting someone do something for me because they need to be able to show that they care. There are so many ways to show compassion to people in these days. We need to be praying for people and loving people, being patient with people, the Bible says, put up with others. Sometimes we're going to have to put up with those around us because that's a great way to show compassion. 
to know that they might be a little bit stressed and anxious, just like we might be a little bit stressed and anxious. God is calling us to be his children and to be children of compassion. And today, that's one of the things that we're learning. And my prayer for you today is that your compassion will grow and grow, multiply and multiply, so that people will see the compassion of God all around them. Let's pray. Father God, we just ask again that you will teach us to be compassionate. Show us examples of compassion, of love and grace and mercy. Give us opportunities to show how we feel, to show the ways that we care. Open our eyes to see the needs around us and not just think about ourselves. May we honor you and give you glory with all the things that we say and all the things that we do. We pray this in the name of Jesus. All God's children said, Amen. So how are you doing on your memory verse? Psalm 145, 8. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. I have a couple things that you can do this week to help you learn that memory verse. One of them is real simple. I made this box. This is just an Amazon box. I'm guessing a lot of you guys have those in your house. And I just covered it with some wrapping paper I had laying around. And then I put different ideas on the sides of the boxes. For example, one says spin around, close your eyes, do the hula, jumping jacks. And you and your family can take turns just tossing the box around. And then you have to say the verse based on what it lands on. So this one just said, close your eyes. So I have to close my eyes and say Psalm 145, 8, the Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. Then you can pass the box to the next person, let them whoo, jump up and down. So they would have to jump up and down and say the memory verse. Just keep doing that until you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. There's another kind of fun thing that you can do, and that's with balloons. Look, I still have that balloon from a couple weeks ago. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to become angry and filled with unfailing love. Take that balloon and just keep it up in the air as you and your family say the memory verse. That's another great way that you can do this. Day, I thought about you could do maybe some pretzel stacking. See if you can stack pretzels to say the memory verse. The Lord is merciful and ah, gotta start over again. The, the Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and oh, I think I'm gonna make it. I think I'm okay and and filled with unfailing love some why am i leaning as i do this psalm 145 that's only a half a pretzel eight oh psalm 145 oh anyway you get the idea grab some pretzels grab some boxes, grab some things around your house and work at putting God's word into your heart. All right, guys, there's one more thing. I love it when his kids give their lives to Jesus, that when they are baptized by family or by pastors, uh, by friends, I'm just so pumped to know that you guys are giving your lives to Jesus, that you know that he is the hope, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. If you have questions about that, you know, you can always come to me, to your parents, um, to any of our staff, because we want to help you in that decision. We want to help you find and follow Jesus forever.